Welcome back to the channel, y'all. We are working on some bows here today, man. I am already thinking about hunting. Well, I've been thinking about it for months, quite honestly. Getting to the woods, uh, trying to accomplish this goal I've made for myself this year of taking out a whitetail with a bow and arrow setup that I've made myself. I'm on my fourth or fifth bow build right now. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys some of the bows that I've been building. Right now we're on a hickory bow, and it's pretty much complete, but I'm gonna put a snake skin on this. Never done a snake skin before, thought it'd be kinda cool. You guys can hang out with me here at the tree house today, and we're gonna do that together. Possum, took him out, wha-bam, no more rooters around in the grass or the flower bed, so that's good. We're on a weekend here, and I usually work on archery stuff and hang out with the family on the weekends. So I've got my snake skin right here. Uh, we're going to rehydrate this snake skin. It's been drying out for over a month. So we'll put it in some water, let it rehydrate. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna show you guys around with the bows that I've been building. So this is what the snake skin looks like when it's all dried out. This is off of a rat snake, a Texas rat snake. It's got some cool red in it. I thought it'd be neat. And normally you would take two snake skins, try to match them. It'd be really cool to have some copperheads or some rattlesnakes, something like that. Don't have that, but this came from a snake that was getting into a chicken coop and uh, eating some, it already eaten some baby chicks and some eggs, causing some issues. So we, uh, we ended that and we are going to cover this bow because it happens to be a very long snake and we'll cover this whole entire hickory bow. So I got my favorite little tin cup here. My camp cup, my hunting cup, that's what I always take around. I don't know why I'm putting that snake skin in there. So I'm gonna be drinking some delicious coffee out of that one day again. But we'll just let that soak in there. I'm gonna say about 30 minutes. Never done this before and I'm not an expert. So don't take my advice and I'm sure you guys will correct all my mistakes in the comments. But if you guys do want to, and you still have a chance to do this, if you do want to try building a bow, maybe you have a deer lease that you always go to, uh, you just want to switch it up this year, kind of like me, you can build your own bow. Um, you can get the Bowyer's Bible, which basically tells you everything you know, everything you need to know about building bows from wood in your backyard or getting staves or whatever. You can buy staves. Um, there's tons of videos on, on YouTube about it where you can learn that way as well. But it seems like even everybody that, uh, that makes YouTube videos, they all revert back to that Bowyer's Bible. That's kind of the, 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 it's the Bible, man. It's the basics of building bows. So if you want to get into it, I highly recommend that book. And it's just a cool, it's a cool outdoor book to have in the, in the collection. So let me put this on the tripod. I'll show you guys. The Comanche bow first, the Comanche flat bow. This is the first bow I built out of Osage, and it's a Comanche flat bow. This was a branch, uh, a large branch, but it, it was a branch of Osage wood. It's got tons of knots. Terrible, terrible. That's why I had to put rawhide on it. Um, and you know, I've, I just finished sealing it this morning. So this is one I've been working on. It is a instinctual style bow. It's not made for a full draw, which my full draw on a a traditional primitive bow is like 26 and a half fish so I can't even fully draw it back it's just like snap shooting it's literally how uh, a lot of the Indians shot it's really fun to shoot the problem is in a hunting scenario I get a little nervous with consistency I like to have an anchor point so coming inside to the cave and this one is another branch bow that is uh, also wrapped in rawhide, and uh, it's Osage, and it's also sealed. Put a leather handle on it, and it's about a, you know, I'm going to say after adding the rawhide, it's close to 40 pounds. Uh, pull it back, it's, it's, got a, it's got a little three-inch offset. Tips are flipped, so it's, you know, semi-recurved, I guess you could call it. So I love shooting this bow, and in fact, we'll go outside and shoot this thing here in a minute, because that's just fun to watch been patiently and progressively building arrows from you know full primitive style with like you know animal fat beeswax to you know more of like just trad style 
with the turkey feathers. Uh, I've got different spines and different lengths. Needless to say, I have fully immersed myself into the trad game. Love it, but I haven't, I haven't forgot about the conventional, y'all. Two of them I am working on right now. Um, the crossbow is a separate project, but anyway, two of these, I'm gonna be doing videos on these complete full setups from scratch. Tags still on it. This one doesn't even have a string on it. So complete full setup this year. And I'm taking my newfound interest in trads and I'm kind of kind of putting that into these compounds. So pretty excited about archery this year to say the least. All right, we're filling time while our snake skin's soaking. So while this is still soaking, I'm gonna get this hickory bow ready. I'm gonna put it in my vise here. Doing this traditional bow stuff is, a lot of it's just woodworking. So many of the tools that I already have, I can just put them to use in, in making these bows. So what I'm gonna do right here is just scuff up the top of this. So we're literally gonna take wood glue, put it on top of here, and then apply the snake skin. And it's pretty simple. It's exactly how I've been doing the rawhide as well. It's yet to come off, yet to explode. We shall see though. So to get a good adhesion, I'm gonna take this 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna go with, with the grain here. Actually not, not really liking the way that is going too much. I'm actually gonna take uh, this old crusty hacksaw. Try to get a little bit deeper scarring on here. Denatured alcohol. This stuff right here, <laughs> don't take a swig of it. It'll light you up, not that I've done it. But I'm just gonna wipe this down to get any sort of Cheeto stains, potato, greasy potato chips. No, I'm kidding, I'm not, not putting that stuff in my bows, but you know, just oils from my hands, just messing around with it. Any sort of other stuff from the shop. I have yet to see a snakeskin uh, backed trad bow where I'm like, ugh, that doesn't look good. They, they all look good. Now, I've never seen one with a rat snake on it. This is probably going to be one of the few out there, but uh, nevertheless, it should look cool. And it's got a little red pop in it. So when I put, uh, put a sealer on here, mm, it's going to be pretty. Wood glue that we're going to be using, and every everybody needs to have this in the wood shop anyways. Tight bonds. This is tight bond three though. It's uh, it's waterproof, or they say it's waterproof. Here's the issue with this one right here. It's, I was putting that little recurve in there. And I just I just sent it a little too hard over the edge. It just barely cracked. I was heating the wood, and it just barely cracked. And I tight bonded the absolute tar out of it. I mean, there's a fat layer of tight bond on there. So by no means. Am I a master craftsman at this? But I've shot this bow enough times now that I think it's gonna hold up. I haven't seen any issues in the crack. I've probably shot it two or three hundred, two or three hundred arrows with uh, having that crack on there, and it hasn't hasn't budged. So we're gonna add this snake skin on here now. First of all, you want to drink that water for good luck, just in case. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna pour this water out. I'll be right back. All right, so it was in there about 20 minutes. And now it's completely soggy, soft. That's what you want. So I'm gonna actually lay this out over the bow sort of how I want it. And then we'll put it on. Look at this, look at this. Big boy. You think that thing could eat a chicken? Oh yeah. Ate its last chicken. Look at that, isn't that pretty? That is pretty cool, guys. That is awesome. First time laying a snake skin on a bow, it just feels feels right. So I'm gonna cut this little four inch section off here. And for some reason it's also got like a weird, I don't know if it just had meat, more meat on it or something. It's kind of crooked. Take that piece off. Save that for something else. Maybe someday I'll need a piece of snake skin for something. Now I just need to make sure there's not scales underneath it 
which there are. So it's not gonna go over the sides of the bow. It's technically gonna just be on the back. All right, so that is starting to get sort of tacky. I don't want it like super liquidy because it'll slide around a bunch. We're gonna start laying our skin on here. So from right here, I don't really know what I'm doing. I am just pulling tight on this on both sides, hoping that the air bubbles come out. And I'm trying to get everything even so it looks nice and pretty. I feel like I'm missing a huge step right here. I feel like something is, I'm missing something big and I don't know what it is. I'll figure it out as soon as I'm done. I did not refer to the, the Boyer's books at all before I came and did this. I literally just walked out in the garage and said, hey, I wanna do this, so turn on the camera. It's pretty much on here at this point, y'all. So all I'm really doing it's just stretching it out, just pulling the edges to try to get those any little glue pockets, bubbles out, and then just stretch that skin to get it tight over the top. Shoo, baby! I'm excited about that, y'all. That looks cool. I just think that's one of those ones, you, you just break it out of the truck at deer camp, you know, like, boys, hey, let me show you something. We got something new this year. You break it out, and they're like, you did that, dude? You really did that? And you're like, yeah, man, I made that. They're not even going to believe it. That may fall off the first time I shoot it, but it's going to look cool for a second or two. Now, I'm going to shoot one of my bows so you guys can see it. Because Honestly, I shoot pretty much every day that I'm home, every evening when it cools down, just a scotch. I just want to share these bows with you guys. Really pretty awesome. Worked hard on them. So we'll get a little shooting right here. Let's see if we can get some groups. Low to the right. Pretty good arrow flight on that. Pretty decent little group. Uh, there we go. So you know that's at 15 yards, about. You know it's obviously aiming for the center, so didn't get that. But as, as long as you're consistent, uh, whatever you know, whatever you do, what however you get there, however you're hitting that target consistently, you know, do it. But for me, something that I figured out because early on I was like, I'd be swapping the target and then my third or fourth shot it would just like I miss the target like what how am I off that much like I'm hitting and then I'm off and I just figured out my hand my hand position and a lot of times you see it in the arrow flight or how it's positioned in the target if your arrows left or right I've had a tendency to come back and be inconsistent when I'm pulling back like I'm waiting for the string to leave my hand and now I'm sort of positioning right here. It's like in between my ear and my chin, like right on the jaw, making a little C with my hand. So that's that's where I'm pulling. So it's not my full draw length. Like when I draw when I draw back on my compound, my knuckle is sitting right there behind my ear. But with this, I'm right here. So it's you know two and a half, three inches shorter. Partially because of the group was nice to look at, but the form, I, my form was consistent all three shots, felt great. So just took our snakeskin bow, I moved it outside 
so we can get some breeze. We've got a little breeze today. It's about 104. A little toasty, not as hot as yesterday. It was 107, but we're gonna go inside here. So I heard a whisper that someone was gonna make an ice cream cookie. That's something I wanna be a part of. There they are, OSG's classic Snickerdoodle ice cream sandwich cookies. That is happening right there, my friends. And that is my lovely wife's hands. But lady, cooking ice cream sandwiches I on a Sunday. I won't let it get anywhere. You won't let it get anywhere? Not going to be messy. Except your mouth, right? The three major. I'm going to use it for one of my school plates. I'm doing three. Hey, what so, is going on here? How come she's being served for me? I'm sorry. Do I you mean, want an ice cream sandwich? I thought I was getting special treats. You Did are. I not well, conquer the yard for you? You're right. Yeah. So maybe Cookie. I made these Thank just you, for Amy. you. Cookie. Thank you. I'm just kidding. Nothing in this world is just for me. When you have two kids in the household, this is how it is. You're last in line. Mm -hmm. Big bonus points, getting that possum. Now ice cream cookies magically appear. It's you, you see this, you see this? Happy wife, happy life, things see start you. happening. Well, I'm gonna put that in my face. Okay. <clears throat> <coughs> <coughs> we got over there. I got cinnamon down my throat. <laughs> cinnamon went down my throat. Okay, you all look at this. Look. All right, Bo's been out here three hours in a hundred plus degree heat. So the wood glue, it should be dry now and I see some of the scales that are starting to flake up a little bit. So um, one thing that I've noticed is that since it's been drying, it's curling in some areas and it's starting to kind of get warpy on the edge. Now you can already hear it, it's, it's fairly dry, but I think it's safe enough at this point that I can go ahead and take a, take a blade and just take off that excess on the sides and see what we're looking like. Okay. I've still got a little bit of work to do with the knife, just taking a real sharp knife. And since I've kind of beveled the edges of this bow, it's kind of rounded, just have to do that a little more with the knife and get those little spots. Jump spot right here. I put some wood glue in one of these little, uh, I don't know what you call them, little disposable containers. It's got a little metal uh, beak on the top, so I can insert that into real small little cracks and crevasses. And just a couple spots where I missed the edge, I'm going to put it up under there and uh, press that down. And I'm actually going to let this thing sit overnight and really harden on the edges and then I'll be able to uh, to scuff it up on the sides with some sandpaper, kind of get it all smooth. Are we, uh, we putting on a concert out here for Dad? I was going to say, sorry for your interruption. I know, I'm just a walking well, This is service. great. No, I like I like my peaceful woodworking time with a little, a little bit of toddler concert. Full dad months. life. This is my, these are my weekends. That's Isn't sad. that cool? Say yay, Daddy! Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if it was a copperhead, to be honest. It would be. That's the ultimate. You get two copperheads and put them, put them on there. But that's just one snake covering the entire bow. It's kind of crazy. That's crazy. Almost. I mean, from tip to tail, it definitely would have covered the entire thing. That's, and this is one that was in the chicken coop. What Yeah, not ours. It was in uh, where we got our chickens from. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like seaweed. Have you ever like used seaweed yes, to roll like it does. sushi? Yes. It kind of has that like crunchy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, for anyone that is out there wondering, it is like sushi rolls. <laughs> I think I did a decent job. I don't see any uh, big air bubbles that I can make out. And, you know, if I had any of those, we could probably fix them at this point, but I really don't see any. Cut around that shelf pretty good. So I think it looks awesome, man. Makes for some good camo, looks good. I think once we get a coat of finish on there, it's really gonna pop, It'll be all shiny and glossy. So I don't know if that'll be a like a primary hunting bow, but definitely something cool to play around with in the backyard and hunt smaller game with.
I think the rest of the snake skin project is going to be pretty self explanatory, guys. Just going to scrape the scales off, and put a coating on there, and it's pretty much done. Uh, I got to wait a while to be able to shoot it, though. I would show you in that in today's video, but it just takes, it's going to take days from now. So you can go check out the finished product on my Instagram. Uh, it's Lake Fork Guy. I'll leave a link for it down below as well. And with the few short hours I have left here in the cave for the weekend, working on archery stuff, I'm working on uh, some arrows for compound bows. And I want I want you guys to let me know in the comments any of you guys um, you know fletch your own arrows or just have preferences on arrows uh, that you buy. Let me know in the comments down below. I have shot the same arrows for really the last five years. This year I'm I'm totally switching things up, and um, I'd like to know in your comments. I'm still playing around with different fletchings to see uh, what I like for you know for shooting broadheads that I'm going to be shooting and. Uh, there's just tons. There's tons that goes goes into it. Lots of experimentation. So I want to let you guys uh, shout it out in the comments, whatever you like. And also, as a community note, there is a douche that is commenting on other people's comments in the uh, comments down below, uh, saying like they won Texas number, blah blah blah, pretending they're me. That is not me, guys. Don't don't interact with that. I'm trying to go in there and delete these things and block this person. Uh, but you know how it is. Trolls, what are you going to do? Thank you guys for hanging out with me here at the Treehouse today. If you want to stay tuned for more fishing, hunting, and everything else outdoors, subscribe right here to the channel. May God bless you in your adventures in the outdoors. Godspeed. I'll see you on the next one.